So Godot 4.1.1 just got released as a maintenance release for Godot 4.1. So I have the project on a 4.0 and I'm going to be updating on this video and show you the bugs that I found and how I solved them. Hope you enjoyed the video, subscribe, like and let's start the video. So first let us clean everything, then let's drop the terrain here mesh and let's add our shader our terrain shader that we did on other tutorials let's add the textures and the mask and as you can see it looks pretty nice so this is our terrain here and let's see the navigation so it's time we fix the navigation aspects here so let's change the minimum size so let's put the unit here and let's run our game in 4.1.1 let's see if anything breaks and as you can see, the project works all right. So no major bugs or anything from the previous version. So let's increase our unit count to 200 and let's see if it works. And as you can see, everything starts to work all right. And we got our first issue. You can see that units are split apart in a rather weird fashion. And that is due to the navigation agent radius. So let's set this down to 0.15. So one of the first issues we have here is flying. Yes, this is something very interesting that I found and it's an unwanted. So what you need to do is on computer velocity, you set the Y coordinates of the new velocity to zero. So I found that works out and fixes that weird issue. I don't know if that's a bug, but as you can see, it's fixed. Now we have issues with FPS and you can see it's chugging along. That's because of the collision shape, because it's higher than the navigation size, which is 15. The collision shape is 0.2. So what we're going to do is go to the unit and disable the mask for other units. So we are not colliding with other units. This will save us a lot of performance. Well, as you can see here, units now are moving along and we don't have that performance issue any longer. And we are still colliding with the terrain. So let's increase the navigation size here to 0.25. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. So we're starting to get somewhere. The next thing we're going to do here is to delay the raycast operation to update our Y position. So let's delay that by three frames and let's see how it runs it. And as you can see, we have another bug. Units now are starting below the ground and they cannot move upside. So how do we fix that? So I found out that this is due to the units restarting before the terrain collisions is actually started. So what you're going to do is simply disable the process and wait for a single process frame. Then we are going to enable the physics and process frame of the units back. And as you can see, it fixes the issue. Now we have here another issue. Our selection sprite is fighting with the terrain, so it's clipping below the terrain. So the solution for that is just to increase the sprites to something like 0.1 on the Y coordinate. Now here was a bug that I found with the selection. It seems that I could not select past a certain point. That was due to my selection collision box that I made to filter units in the world. As you can see, it is not completely 100% covering the screen. So this is just a matter to increase the size of it until it fits the screen perfectly. So now whenever we Want to select units, we should have no problems. So there we go. Now let's take care of navigation. So I make some improvements to navigation. So one of the biggest issues that I had with navigation is it works all right. Okay, but when you set the path to be very far from the units, you can see that the performance drops to absolutely dog crap. So what I found to fix that was to do something here is to actually follow another object that just it has the longer path. So only one unit gets a longer path and the rest will follow it. And when you make that thing disappears, you don't actually see what's happening. So this delays the movement operation, but it works much better. So how do you actually do this? Well, it's very simple. So this is the cone object and you can see here how it's working. It's very basic stuff. It's basic navigation, so everything I'm doing here is just setting it to move. So let's take a look at the script. So as you can see here, it's very simple. So this is what it looks like without seeing the cone nor the navigation debug. And as you can see, we can improve the reaction of the units. 
at the moment is very bad. So one of the things we can do here is to go on the navigation and create a function that's going to give a temporary boost to the speed of that con object to help the navigation be a little faster. And whenever we set the navigation speed of that fake object, we're going to give a boost for one second of five times the navigation speed of the units we are moving. Because you can see this improves the reaction of the units a lot. So now they will start to follow it a lot better. And you can see here we still have to improve some of the stuff, but overall this improves the reaction of the units. So this is something else that I also added. I don't know if I'm going to add for military units, but you can see they can stack up. And you do this by simply disable the navigation avoidance whenever they finish the navigation. So here you can see that the navigation is being disabled whenever we finish the navigation and by each three physics frame we also are making sure that our navigation avoidance is set to true. And this get physics frame function here you can see that we can use to delay complex operations. This is how you can delay complex operations or performance boost. So now I want to show you something else that I changed. So the graphics of the units to the floor are going to be updated. So here I'm going to just duplicate the sprite and make it red to symbolize the character body origin. So what I'm going to show you is how I'm going to make sure that the units stay on ground. So as you can see, the red circle is the origin of the character body 3D. And in order to make sure that our units stay on the floor, we are checking using a raycast collision. So the red portion is the character body 3D origin and the white portion is the graphic of the unit. And every three physics frame we update the unit's graphics to the terrain using a collision, so it's going to move up and down with the raycast to make sure that the unit stays on ground, and this is the effect it gives. So as you can see, the character body RNG only follows the navigation map, but the character graphics are following the terrain. So this is the next step to apply the fog of war. On your terrain mesh, you got to make sure that you have a second UV map that's projected from the top. And uh, here you can see how I did it. And this is needed so that fog of war works all right. So here I'm just updating the map, doing exactly the same thing I did previously. So this here is the navigation basis. So I created this mesh on Blender using a projection modifier. So this is going to help us to create a navigation mesh a little better than using the collision mesh because it's very detailed, the collision mesh. So this is the collision mesh and this is the navigation mesh. And you can see we can apply bake and it works all right. So the fog of war system that I did in the previous video worked for that tutorial, but on this case the performance was completely abysmal. I think that was to be expected because running the solve operations for each unit is simply will not work. So for the moment being, just skip dissolving all the units, I'm going to find another solution for that. Regarding the fog of war texture, I made some changes here. You can see that I have removed the semi-visible layer and here on the dissolve function, because of the abysmal performance of dissolving each sprite, I'm actually baking all the sprites together using the viewports. I'm dissolving, combining all the sprites, then later turning the fog of our dissolved sprites color down a lot, so it shows us the semi visible areas. And here we also have some await signals because the render server here needs to wait for us to finish the dissolving fog. And then we are emitting a dissolve finish signal, which is used later to be awaited so we can emit the fog of our being updated and then we can restart the loop. So this change here allows us to have performance back again. So that solves our performance issue with the viewport texture. So for you to hide this, I learned that you can and negative scale the viewport or the controller that is there. You put minus one, it's going to mirror up top. And because we are using the viewport, not the control texture, it's not going to show on the HUD. On the top here is not going to show, but we are still working with it. And now we have the fog of war with decent performance. So this is so far what I got, and I gotta say it's looking quite promising. 
So this is where we started the project and as you can see pretty bare bones here and this is where we are at the moment and you can see starting to get along very well. So this is looking very promising to me and super excited to continue working on this. So that's all for this video that I got for you guys. Hope you enjoy it. Subscribe, like and post your comments and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you everyone for watching.